All right, so we are back once again with 411, and of course, we are so glad you could join us today. Now, today I'm hosting Katombola Member of Parliament, Honorable Andeleki Clement, as we take a look at, you know, as we begin the discussion on the 2024 national budget, which was uh, presented to Parliament last week, Friday. Now, an amount worth 180 billion kwacha is earmarked to be spent in the year 2024. And of course, we have seen, among other changes, changes to the CDF, changes to the um, to the agricultural sector, about 15% has been diverted to the agriculture to, 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 to the education sector. The agri sector as well has seen an increment in terms of the allocation itself. But obviously, for the sake of this uh, particular conversation, we want to focus much of our attention discussing the CDF. He is a people's representative, so he needs to take keen interest in how much has been given per constituency. And of course, we are talking about uh, 30 Point six million kwacha, which has been allocated by the constituency. We'll begin our conversation by looking at the three adjustments that have been made to the CDF so far, from 1.6 to the three under the UPND government. Honorable, thank you so much for coming through. It's been a year since the last time that uh, you know I saw you. How have you been? Yeah, I've been well, my brother. How is our QTV? Thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, allow me to say good morning to Zambia, good morning to all our fellow viewers, wherever you are. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us today and uh, hopefully that uh, you're doing great. How is uh, our constituency doing? Katombala constituency is okay. It's awakening. Mm -hmm. It was sleeping, but now it is awakening. And Fantastic. We are, happy. we are so happy. Great, great. 2024 national budget has seen an increment of uh, the CDF from uh, 28.3 to 30.6. Let's begin our conversation by looking at the first CDF increment from 1.6 to about 25.7. Exactly, which was uh, the, for the first budget of the UPNT, we saw a huge increment in the CDF. How has it been working for you in the constituency, and apparently that was the first um, your 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 first opportunity in parliament. You arrived when you know CDF now was a huge amount of money. Yes, indeed. Um, we call ourselves firstborn, mm -hmm. firstborn children of this government. We are privileged because all our all our MPs that we are there, we are saying they were under a stepfather. Mm -hmm. So we are the first bonds, and uh, first and foremost, we want to thank the government most sincerely, especially His Excellency President, for thinking about the innovation on CDF, because CDF is a game changer. It's a life changer. It has been um, a very, very significant life-changing moment through the CDF. I will tell you that uh, the time I was elected member of parliament, for Katombola constituency, literally, it was like Katombola constituency was like a, a constituency that was ravaged, you know, and uh, no, no proper road network, no electricity, no access to clean drinking water, no schools, people, children had to walk long distances. You can imagine the whole ch chief momba, the whole chief dog. The highest level of education a child could get was up to grade seven. You can imagine the whole five chiefdoms. The only hospital was Kazungura District Hospital, which is actually over 280 kilometers. If you have to get from Nyawa to go to Kazungura, it's very, very far. So no mochari. The whole Kazungura district has been not a single mochari at the time we are taking over office. So if you passed away in the morning, in the afternoon, you have to be put to rest. Things we have quite difficult, but with CDF, things are happening. And I want to reiterate the point that we want to thank this <coughs> government in no precise terms that CDF is changing and transforming the lives of our people, particularly the free education policy. I know some people may trivialize free education, but I'll tell you that in constituencies for us who preside over constituencies that are rural, where poverty is predominant, you know, you find a child previously using one ex small exercise book, he's writing this subject here, he's writing the other subject in between, he's sharing a pencil, you know, three, four children. You know, parents, are, we, we are going through a lot. You know, these are, we're talking of uh, reality, not things that people do rhetoric in politics here and there. You know, free education 
has really transformed our people. We have put up infrastructure nearly everywhere. Every constituency today, has, um, every word in the constituency as we are speaking, there's construction going on. In Momba, which was ending at grade 7, we are now putting up a fully French secondary school in Momba and construction is underway. We've done the same uh, second uh, boarding secondary school in Kasensa in Chief Sekute. It's at 98%. The mini hospital in Nyawa, electricity is rolling now in Kazongula. We use CDF to pay 1 million kwacha to the Rural Electrification Authority to connect our people in Kazungura. And I'm so proud as a member of parliament that the whole Kazungura district, the whole Katombora constituency for the very first time will receive electricity. In the year 2024, 2025, priority number one is water and working on the roads. This is a legacy we want to leave in Katombora constituency before we get to the election. First priority is water. The directive I have given to the CDF committee is to ensure that in 2024, the focus for Katombora constituency is water and road network. We are acquiring, we have already received some pieces of earth moving equipment, but we are remaining with a compactor and a water bowser. These will be in, in the first quarter of 2024. We want to open up all the roads, and this is all coming from CDF. It's coming from CDF. We want to put up water at every point that matters. Dams. We want to put dams. We are happy in the budget. There is an allocation for dams for Katombora constituency for five dams. So we are so happy. Telephone network was also a problem. We are given 19 telephone towers. Uh, Infratel is on the ground working together with Zamtel, trying to earmark where the towers and how the towers will be set up. We are happy. The biggest problem we have now is water and road network. Once we touch those areas, as we get to the elections in 2020, 2026, as we get to vote, the work will speak for us. This okay. is what I can say. CDF is really working for us, and we appreciate the decision by His Excellency President to increase it even much more beyond 30, uh, 30 million kwacha. This will go a very, very long way in opening up the road network, putting up our own dams. We'll use our own earth-moving equipment in our constituency to open up Kazungura district and put connect our people. We also thank, you know, the budget touched on the Kazungura uh, bulk water project, which means that we are going to have our own, our own water recreation being connected to our people. So this is what we've been fighting for. This is what independence means. Electricity, having good road, having clean drinking water. This is what independence means and having telephone network. These are the areas that we campaigned on as a trajectory of improving the lifestyle of our people. And we are thankful. And as member of parliament, I'm so proud that I could be associated with the government of this day. Let's talk about, you know, the 2023 national budget, uh, CDF to be specific. Your constituency received uh, 28.3 million kwacha. How was it utilized? Thank you very much. Our preoccupation, like I had earlier touched on, was education. Mm -hmm. Following the introduction of free education by His Excellency the President and his government, we concentrated mm -hmm. so much. Because remember, following that announcement, our children who have found themselves in illicit marriages and those who found themselves being married while young had to flock back to school. Working with the church, working with the village headmen, the chiefs, we managed to mobilize the children back into the classroom. So this caused a lot of pressure on the classroom, on the desks. So we had to, 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 to use the money for CDF to put up infrastructure. In every word as I'm speaking, we are putting up at least extension of educational infrastructure, meaning classroom blocks have been constructed. You go to Kanchere, you see that we are constructing. You go to Mukuni, you see that we are constructing Nyawa. It's now going to be a fully fledged boarding secondary school. We are putting up hostels there. So we concentrated very much on acquisition of desks. We concentrated very much on expanding our education infrastructure and also coupled with teachers' houses and also uh, water recreation. Remember, these public places like schools didn't have access to water. So that was the preoccupation of the previous money that we acquired through CDF. We were acquiring desks, you know, we spent... We spent uh, quite colossal sums of money because the directive by His Excellency President on CDF was to ensure that our children, no child in the year 2024 should be seen sitting on the floor while learning. So we preoccupied ourselves in that particular area. And also, you know, we had uh, construction of the chief's palaces. 
of course you are aware that one million kwacha was directed to the construction of of the chief's palace one million kwacha was directed to rural electrification authority to ensure that kazungura district is connected to the electricity grid you know that one million kwacha was diverted also to ensure that we acquire the CDF monitoring vehicle, the vehicles that we all got, <coughs> one million kwacha was directed to acquisition of a police vehicle to ensure that our police officers are mobile. And as you are aware, in Katombara constituency, we are also concentrating on construction of police posts in all the chiefdoms. We want to see police there so that there is tranquility, there is law and order. People obey the law. So this has been the preoccupation of the of 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 our constituency during the last year and going forward like i indicated we are getting the remaining pieces of earth moving equipment to open up the road network and also to be able to put our own dams in nearly in every point that matter in the words we want to put dams so that we do not have a problem of 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 water to feed i mean for our livestock to be able to have access to clean drinking water, including our people. Remember, my people in Katombora constraints are predominantly farmers. They keep keto, but the livestock is their lifestyle. So without dams, it becomes quite a problem. We are also going to concentrate on deep tanks. We thank the, the, the president through the Minister of Finance, who has announced that extension services, extension services in this current budget that was presented is going to receive colossal sums of money in order to ensure that farming becomes a real business. Remember the president also touched the issue of water harvest, which is very, very important. You know, we host the Zambezi River. The Zambezi River is shared by many constituencies, including Katombola constituency. We can just imagine what we can do with that water if it was harvested. Even the issues we are raising of access to clean drinking water would be a thing of the past the coming of the uh, Kazungura water project. It means we will be able to purify our own water and connect our people to clean tap drinking water. This is what we want. And this is what we've been advocating. The president also touched a number of issues, uh, which was also in his speech when he addressed parliament, which was also reflected by the minister of finance when he talked of FISIP. FISIP will continue. But on top of FISIP, those who have no access, there is now a credit window that has been created, which is a very, very important milestone. Credit window, which is almost very little interest on top. Meaning, even yourself, you can go to the credit window and borrow the money and do agriculture. I think this is the way it should be. Because FISIP is not intended to help all the farmers. There are viable farmers who would just go and get some money and be able to invest in farming. So a lot of achievements, particularly also the president touched on the issue of councillors. For the very first time, councillors are going to receive salaries. Can imagine? Can imagine? This has never happened. The question that lingers uh, in my mind is that uh, uh, over 30 million going to be given through CDF now. Where was this money going before the new Dawn government? Who was pocketing this money? You know? It was. It used to be 1.6, and yes. the, one of the 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 the, the major uh, 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 complaint that was coming as a result of you know CDF was that it was not enough. Of which, even when the UPND government, the new Don government came into office, it recognized the fact that it wasn't truly really enough. Probably that's the reason why the president took the step to push CDF to 25.7 million kwacha. My brother, it's an issue of prudent management, you know. That 1.6 was not even being given at regular interviews, as, uh, intervals as required. What was happening was that some constituencies could be given, some constituencies could not be given. So the issue is, his Excellency the President and his government is now giving over 30 million CDF. Well, who was pocketing this money? At the time, for example, PF was in office. At the time, other governments were in office. What has happened has never happened since the time of Adam and Eva. What is happening now has never happened. Look at our children, University of Zambia and other. They are now getting the back on meal allowance. The question is, where, did they, where was this money that this government is now rolling back to free education, rolling back to meal allowances for our children? Where was it going? You can only imagine that this money possibly ended up in people's pockets. And we want the government, we want to thank the government for thinking about those poor children who are at the university. And I'm happy that this year, 
the budget has been relating to the, ro the loans board has been multiplied almost three times, meaning the number of students who are going to get this particular meal allowance through the loans board is going to increase, and that is how it should be. We are aware that PF concentrated very much in removing the meal allowances and invested more in illiterates so that our people are illiterate and dependent on them through Kadarism. A lot of you know, I saw one young person that they were interviewing, they were asking, when you grow up, what do you want to, what career do you want to pursue? And he was like, no, I want to be a PF cadre, because it was very rewarding at the time. You can imagine children in school could think about that being a career. You know, it's good that this decency has been restored through the rule of law. No one now can be harassed for nothing, just for your opinion, you know, maybe don't believe in a particular part, political party. And that's how it should be. And we thank the president for all these all these decisions to ensure that sanity is restored back to the country called Zambia. The rule of law, no arbitrary detention, no extrajudicial killings through the police. You remember under PF, we lost 21 of our citizens and killed at the hands of the institution that is supposed to have protected them, the police. The killing of Chibromapens, the blood of Chibromapens, Nsama Nsama. Francis Kaunda, Shimuzila, the way they were murdered in cold blood under the government which was supposed to protect them. Look at the gassing. Up to now, we are questioning who, man, who was in charge of gassing? Who did? This is, this is an Zambian. Where did this culture come from where people could just come and gas under the PF? Look at Lord Shedding, how it was in this country powers switched off anyhow. Do you want really to get back there to such a road shaded for eight hours, for six hours? We, had, we went through a very, very difficult situation in the previous government. And I think we need to support this government. Uh, we may not be the angels. This is the people's government. The people where we are not doing fine, they must say, no, here you are not doing fine. Of course, we are aware of the challenges, for example, that have come in relation to the issue of milliwim because of the regional dynamics of maize. We didn't produce enough maize in the country, and we must admit that, that this has caused unstable prices of milliwim. And we are happy that His Excellency President has addressed that issue. The issue of milliwim is a source of great concern to the government, and it is immediately addressing that particular situation to ensure that the cost of minimum is reduced to the lowest level so that all our Zambian citizens are able to afford. This is the president was so blunt when he came to open parliament. And I think from the measures that has been put in the agriculture sector, you would see that nearly everyone is going to be encouraged and the price of minimum really is going to get is going to get down. It was a source of great concern. People, you know, animal in man, people are getting subsidized minimum at FRI. But what do they do? They want to heighten the prices because they know government does not have hammer mills trying to sabotage government in that particular fashion. But government is alert and they are now also thinking of saying, look, we need to find a way also having control because the maize is with FRI. So if we give you the maize, we need to agree what price you are going to sell. And... This is literally what I can call sabotage. Government gives you subsidized maize at FRI, then you go and want to sell outside the country, to, to, to the Congo, for example, to Angola, to other places in the region, where you think the price is higher, thereby disadvantaging citizens. So I want to state very clearly and in precise terms that government is concerned. The party in government is concerned with the escalating prices of, of, of Mirimim, which has been caused artificially, mostly by the millers, mostly by selfish individuals or traders who want to disadvantage Zambian citizens and divert the maize either to sell in the region, so that to the disadvantage of the people, to the disadvantage against the people of Zambia. So the government is highly concerned. Party in government is highly concerned, and yeah, the president is indicated that he's putting up measures to remedy the escalating price of Mirimim. And the Zambian people must give us an opportunity to remedy that situation. I think that's what I can say as regards that subject. When, 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 when I asked about you know, how the 2023 uh, CDF was utilized, one of the key things that I noticed, um, um, I don't know how many projects um, uh, that you began in 2023 using the 2023 CDF have been done completely 
and of course what is still pending and getting into the 2024 uh, CDF which is 30.6 what are the priority areas yes indeed like I said we utilized the money in construction of schools in all the 16 wards okay so I you have mean, 16 wards. so you have got 16 schools that are being yes, put up yes, at the moment. that have been put up okay that have been put up as we are speaking schools and health facilities because in some of the areas we prioritize both the school mm -hmm. and the health facility remember health is life health is wealth mm -hmm. so you cannot you think of the school in isolation and you isolate a health facility and in most of the places like in Momba and other places where we didn't have health facilities we have prioritized both we are, we are putting up a health facility at the same time we are also we are also putting up schools when you talk of schools it can, it's a full package you're talking of accommodation for the teachers you're talking of the school infrastructure you're talking of desks if uh, la, 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 the laboratories you know they need to come with the, apparatus that you use in the, la in the in the lab and also the accommodation for the children like in mukuni uh, we feel that mukuni should be a fully fledged boarding secondary because ordinarily it was just a, like a daily weekly boarding so children used to just have to stay around and that was endangering particularly our our girls and mukuni is going to be a fully fledged boarding secondary school so is nyawa so is msokotwani so is makunga uh, we and Kaue, we feel that that is a way to go. That is a way to go. In 2024, the concentration, like I indicated, in 2024 will be one acquisition of earth moving equipment. We have already acquired some pieces, some pieces are not there, which will include machinery for construction of boreholes. It's not we are not just going to construct dams, but we also want to water through boreholes. So the concentration very much in 2024 will be opening up Kazungura district through road network. We are aware that right now we are doing the Nyawa Road. It is coming from Zimba, it is going to Nyawa, from Nyawa, it is going to Kauwe, from Kauwe, it is connecting. It is going to connect to Kalomo. This is a multi-million road being constructed. It is going to be a tarmac road, so it is uh, almost done. Electricity, this road is going with drainage. It is going also with electricity. So this project is underway. We are already done with the, 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 the level one hospital in Nyawa, and we are moving on in Kauwe. We are constructing a boarding secondary school. So the real concentration in the year 2024 is one, water for our human beings, our people, our citizens, and for the livestock. Concentration number two is the road network. The next road we are going to be doing is the road from Senkovo, is passing through Musokotwani, it is going to Makunka, from Makunka it will make a Y. It will go to Kanchere, and it will go to Ngweze, across the Ngweze, the Ngweze River, it's going to Bombe. This will be the second road that we'll be working on in the year 2024. Hence the acquisition of this earth moving equipment. Once this road is done, before we reach 2025, we would have moved to do the Sekute road. That is the idea. We have also a road going to Katapaz. These are short roads. The why we are mentioning the bigger roads, because it's a bigger project. The road from Livingstone, from Senkovo, going to Katapaz is a source of great concern. And before the end of our term, all those roads must be in good order. Hence the reason of acquisition of earth moving equipment so that come 2026, when we go to meet our people, we are not going to campaign or say anything. It is them actually who will be speaking to us as to how we have delivered our mandate. Otherwise, that's a concentration in 2024 in, in through this increased CDF. And I thank the president and his government for increasing CDF. You're talking about 16 words, 16 schools. Out of 16 schools that you know you 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 are you are putting up, how many are done, or probably how many you have you already started? You know the groundwork. We have done uh, we have done about 10. 10, 10. are ready. And they are being handed over in phases. Some have already been handed over. Others are not yet handed over. 
So right now, as we are speaking, how we will be in Sikaonswe for the handover ceremony of ESCO. We also have the same next week, we are having a handover of the, of the level one hospital in Nyawa. So these, these pieces are being handed as and when it's ready. This is how it is. About in 10 words, we are ready. In six words, we are not ready. Currently, when you talk about water problem in uh, Katombola, what is the main source of, you know, uh, water for the people at the moment? We still have a challenge <clears throat> on water. Hence the direction why I was literally appreciating the government for coming up with the Kazungura water project. What was happening is that our people had to depend on dams, very few dams that are there. In How Sogo, many dams are there? We have about four dams. Are these are these are uh, dependent? Are these rain-fed dams, or probably yes. they do survive even under dry spells? Yeah, they are rain-fed, so some are able to retain the water up to the next uh, season. But you know that the, the 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 rain pattern in southern province hasn't been the best in the last three four years. It's not been the best. So as a result, uh, you know, I talk of the few dams that are there. For example, in Musokotwani. <laughs> The Mesopotwani Dam was constructed in 1988 when we were just small boys by the, 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 the late Prime Minister, Kebi Mesopotwani. He was a member of parliament. He was our first member of parliament for that constituency. So he left a dam there in Siakasipa. Also, there's another dam. Just very few dams, you know, who, that are able to retain the water. The rest are small, small dams that can retain the water. So the thinking of uh, or the, the, the thinking behind now is that we need to put up fully fresh dams, fully fresh dams, not wear dams. Whereby a wear dam is just a small dam which can just feed a smaller population. The idea now is that we need to put up a fully fresh dam. For example, in Nyawa, we need to put a fully fresh dam. Musokotwani already has a dam. All they need is to expand the dam. Siakasipa is the same. We want to do the same in Ngwezi. Our people in Ngwezi, Skawunzwe, in Mukuni, water really becomes a problem. To walk long distances, you know, particularly our mothers, you know that at least Mukuni, in Mukuni Gundu, Mukuni Gundu is the palace, where the palace is. Mm -hmm. At least the level of challenges of water is not that much. We have areas outside, outside Mukuni, like Chunga, like Ndele. You know, Ndele Road has also to be done. In Ndele, water is quite a problem. In Chunga, in Siamasimbi. So we find our people have to depend on one small hand pump. Now, sometime, you know, during a dry spell or the season, you know, you know, you know in summer, the water levels go very much down. Now, you find that the same hand pump has to feed the livestock, has to give water to the livestock. You get the point. has also to give water to our people. So there are crashes there. The animals want, you know, we keep livestock. There, there are pigs, there are goats, there are what. So in terms of satisfying the demand of water becomes a problem. And you know that uh, we are sitting literally in the national park like in Mokuni. Elephants also come to ask for that same water. Sometimes we have these accidents of the competition between between our citizens, our, our, our members of the constituency, and the wild animals. But with the coming of the idea of the Kazungura Water Project, we feel that it's going to connect our people so that our livestock, we are able to just open up the dams for them so that the livestock are able to survive even in hard and extreme situations. That's the thinking now. 16 words, uh, 16 words, I don't know how many water points are you, are you, are you planning to put in Katombola uh, in, 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 each, in each word and what kind of uh, the, the water system are you looking at? Are you looking at kiosks? Are you looking at boreholes? Are you looking at tap water? I don't know what plan you have as an MP. The, the, you know, when you don't have enough mm -hmm. and you have a bigger family, we need to be economical. In economic, in trying to distribute. When you're talking of the population for Katombora constituency, it's a very big population. I'm talking of about 160,000 people to 160,000 plus people. You need to know how you are going to distribute. You know, distribution is very, very important. I have five chiefdoms, and in the five chiefdoms, I need to ensure as MP that in the distribution, it is done properly. 
So Where we have bigger, doms, yes, five, the five, bigger populations. All the, all the five chief domes, each chief dome will have a brand new palace. Exactly. The thinking of this government is that chiefs must have, we have 286 chiefs that are recognized, that are known to the government. So the thinking of construction of palaces is done in a phased manner mm -hmm. by this government. But like in Katombola <clears throat> constituency, as at last year, we went, released one million kwacha for the construction of the chief's palace, one chief of the five. So it's going in a segmented manner in a systematic manner, so that resources are not depleted. So talking of water, we are going to distribute the water in accordance with the words, mm -hmm. because we can only identify our people through the words. And that is a systematic way of addressing the needs of the people. We have 16 words, and we are going to address the people according to the needs in the words. If we distribute through the chiefdoms, it becomes a mockery. That's what we are going to do. All right, still having a conversation with Katombola Member of Parliament, Honorable Clement Andeleke, as we are looking at uh, key issues pertaining to the increase that CDF for the year 2024. The question is, probably, was it, in, was it necessary to increase the 2024 CDF from 28.3 million kwacha to about... Um, to about 30.6. So now he's broken down how the 2023 national, uh, how 2023 CDF worked in his constituency. So Katombola has got about 16 words. And uh, as a team, they're looking at building 16 schools, both primary and of course secondary as well. On top of that, health facilities. Katombola in general has got more than 160,000 people and the five chiefdoms as well. So in the 2024 national budget, 30.6 <clears throat> has been earmarked to be spent <clears throat> or to be allocated to each constituency. And for Katombola, they're looking at, you know, coming up with earth-moving equipment, buying earth-moving equipment, which will be used, obviously, for the construction of uh, roads which are in a deplorable state, most of them. Then they're also looking at um, uh, how they can actually uh, also deal with the issue of water now these are projects that mm. some have started some are yet to start others are completed already and of course handed over to the government but still talking about the cdf uh, how are you using the cdf to empower your people aside yes. from what you're doing uh, but thank now, you very much uh, like i said cdf is a game changer we have the loans component. <clears throat> we have the loans component, which is helping women. It is helping our youths. It is helping the disabled groups. It is helping the needy groups. Those people that want to venture in entrepreneurship to change their lifestyle. As we are speaking now, from the loans, from the time we assumed the office, 86 groups have already acquired loans. This year, we are thinking almost a similar number must acquire the loans. We are just talking of loans because there are loans, there are grants. We are talking of the loans. Mm -hmm. On the grants, remember the grants is smaller. Who are you giving out these loans to? We are giving women organizations. Okay. We've asked the women to form uh, clubs, to form societies to form up companies to be able to transact with government so that they're able to trade. Particularly the marketeers, are women in the markets, that has been our preoccupation. Our farmers, you know, we have also groups, disadvantaged groups like the disabled. We are looking at them. We are giving them something to do through the loans. We tell them, we can't give you money so that you are able to look after yourselves, even in a better way, other than being in the streets, begging. We have prioritized the needy people, our women particularly. You know that any home can't run without a woman, you know. I've never known a home that has run more effectively without a mother. So our women bear the major consequences when suffering, you know, attacks a home. So we have prioritized women empowerment through loans and grants. We have also prioritized uh, empowerment of the young people through loans and grants. And a, quite a good number of young people 
have applied and accessed this money and wish to take this opportunity to appeal to our people in Katombola constituents to continue to derive benefits and take advantage of the policies of the new Don government to access the grants, uh, to access the loans, those that are having a challenge, for example, for whatever reason. That's why you have an MP. That's why you have the councillor. That's why you have the council chairperson. That's why you have the World Development Committees. That's why you have the grassroots. Pick a phone, call your MP, uh, and the MP will be able to guide you. Go to the council, get the forms, apply. If you have any challenges, reach out to the people that you elected, reach out to the government offices, the office of the district commissioner, the office of the council, the office of the council chairperson, the office of the councillors, the office, so many offices. And I want to ask the people of Katombola constituency to take advantage by applying in numbers to access this money and access these opportunities. Other than the grants, the loans, we have also community projects that are running. The community projects, construction of schools, construction of schools, construction of teachers' houses, construction of this, construction and erecting of boreholes, construction of dormitories. Like now, we just ran an advert for construction of dormitories in Nyawa, construction of dormitories in Kaowe, construction of, 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 of dormitories, I think we had given somebody in Kasenza, construction of, of school infrastructure in Makunka, construction of a school, a school in Wombwe, construction of a school in Chief Momba. All these are projects designed for our people, particularly project number one is to the people of Katombora Construct. When we talk of community projects, we're also talking of uh, desks. You know, that is why we have a provision for the skills training. We encourage our young people to go and learn skills. These skills are very important. They are life skills. If, for example, you learn carpentry, you're able to make the desks. If you learn uh, plumbing, you're able to connect the water because right now we are working on the water project <coughs> to connect our people. These are solar powered water projects. We are not going to accept the, the old style of the mechanical hand pump. The mechanical hand pump has a lot of problems. Most of them that we have elected, they give problems within one year, after one year, because of the, 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 the consistent use of the hand pump to pump water for the livestock, to pump water for, the, for, 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 for our citizens, it becomes very, very costly. You know, the, the, the costly because we are literally always repairing. So we have gone solar because solar, you know, is powered by the sun, sunlight. You know, so put tanks up there. That's what we have done even in Mokuni. So that we don't have the problem of having. We've connected Mokuni, for example, door-to-door -door taps. The kiosks are there. You know, door to door, people are able to just have water in their homes. This is what we wanted. Our people have electricity in their homes in the village in Mukuni. That's what we wanted. In Musokotwani, it's the same. You go to Chief Sekute, it's the same in the village. There is now electricity in there. In Nyawa, this is what we have done. The chief that is remaining that we are going to connect very shortly is Momba. So the point that I'm making here is that I'll tell you that um, a lot of things are happening in Katombola constraints, a lot. And I wished this project, this program was a live interview so that our people can phone in and attest to what is happening in Katombola constraints and condemn if at all there is an area where they can condemn. We know we can't change everything at once. Rome was not built in a day. This government is going to deliver on its promises as we promised. Like in Katombola constituency, really have appreciated if it's a phone-in program so that I can hear my people speak. I think we have done what Nebuchadnezzar failed to do when he was ruling. What opportunities have you opened for the young people in Katombola mm. through the same CDF? Looking at the fact that, you know, one of the biggest challenges that this country is facing is unemployment levels, and the president has opened it up to to, to the young people, to be innovative, creative, and probably getting into inter, in, entrepreneurship. What opportunities is Katombola offering young people? Yes, Katombola constituency, like I told you, is a very unique constituency because our young people, our young people, some of them have even stopped thinking of jobs now because they're able to work on their own. Okay. Like we have young people who got loans, they got taxes. We have young people that, that got loans, they've gone into butchery business. You know, we have young people that got money. They have decided to have 
to 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 have for example their own their, their own factory where they are able to manufacture discs we are acquiring discs from within Katombora constituency we have our mothers for example so that have gone into poultry business they have gone in various types of businesses so in Katombora particularly for the young people uh, they are the ones actually constructing the schools they are the ones that are doing a number of projects that are running in form of community projects like i said in Katombora constituency priority number 1 for you to get a project you must belong to Katombora constituency and the councils are directed to ensure that during the selection criteria through the CDF the, the the priority number 1 must be to the people of Katombora constituency that is the opportunities that are there are many and through the skills training that i was talking about there are still many other opportunities for the construction of schools that is priority number 1 for our young people in Katombora constituency there are a lot of opportunities and we even went outside the circle even to go to the to, to, uh, under skills training to go to agriculture to ensure that our people under skills are able to be trained for example how to look after chickens and have layers chicken lay eggs and they're able to sell so there are a number of opportunities that are there keeping livestock the, the, this time requires knowledge you need to know how to dip your cattle you need to and through this window of skills development we have afforded that opportunity including driving learning a skill of driving so that our young people are able to be skilled and this is what we've been doing in Katombola constituency okay great one of the key um concerns that many stakeholders civil society organizations uh, political leaders and of course just general public have had with the increase of the cdf is that we are increasing the cdf without first of all looking at you know some of the bottlenecks that you know um uh, uh, probably have been experienced especially where accessibility of these monies by the general public is concerned it is on record that we do have certain areas where people are failing to access this the cdf the money is there but just for people to get that money to get that support it can be in form of grants loans and of course education support programs and all that they're having issues how about in your case are there any bottlenecks that you feel need to be touched on? Uh, yes, indeed. Like, uh, for example, Katombola constituency. Yeah, when you talk of where the district, uh, the district office for Kazungula is, is quite far. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, the people of Momba, for them to come to Kazungula district, they need to do about three hundred kilometers. I will tell you because my constituency starts from Kalomo. If you've been to Kalomo, you, you, you are looking at a constituency that is in a, beyond Livingstone, but you enter through Kalomo to go to Chief Momba. Mm -hmm. You cannot go to Chief Momba unless you enter through Kalomo. We are sharing the boundary with Dundumwezi. We are sharing the boundary. We are sharing the boundary with Kalomo Central. We are sharing uh, the boundary with Mulovezi. You know, the vastness of co the constituency also raises some challenges, for example, on the management of CDF, particularly the fact that we are inheriting a constituency that has no effective communication in terms of telephone network. That is the reason why we have been pushing an agenda of ensuring that Kazungura district has telephone network in every point. Because you know, if you are going to disseminate information to say that, look, we have opened now application for loans, we are going to close on this date. We rely on mechanical means of communicating. Communicate through the councillor, the councillor goes to go and cause a few meetings there. Some people don't get this information. But with the coming of technology, the investment in the technological area by this government through the means of science and technology to ensure that more towers are put up in Zambia is the best way. Because without telephone network, communication becomes hard. You know, you can only disseminate information easily if you are able to access your people, either through a telephone or through any other simple means of communicating. So the CDF challenge, which is just a two-thing challenge, this government is already addressing the issue of telephone towers. Because if you have telephone towers, it's very easy to call somebody and say, look, there is now an advert that is open. You can communicate. Remember, our teachers in rural areas are also helping us to disseminate the information. But sometimes, because of lack of telephone <clears throat> network, uh, it becomes quite a problem. Because, you know, when you go to Momba, you, you'll be talking of an issue. You say, ah, so you mean me? You mean um, Dr. Kaunda died? No, they don't know. No, no, he passed away. You know, they, they, ah, we never got the news. They get the news maybe literally, literally seven months, one year later. They, ah, no, he never heard because there's, 
there's no signal really there's no telephone network you know even if you put your radio there you can't get the tonga section you can't get the radio one which our people really require because there's no signal in those areas and i think the coming of um, this the transformatory agenda by the new don government to ensure that everyone is connected to ZNBC, everyone is connected to telephone network, everyone is connected to every signal, is a good way. And that's how it should have been. So the challenges really are there because, you know, some people wouldn't apply, not because they don't want to apply, but because of the manner, you know, to go to Kazungula, you need to have money. It's not free. To go and take that form, sometimes you require to move. Sometimes the WDC, uh, World Development Committee, may not disseminate the correct information or may not reach a particular corner. You know, you find that there, is disto there are distortions. So I think that the government is already working on the issue to do with telephone network, which will become more easier. I think they need to hasten, to hasten the process, to speed up the process to ensure that telephone network is available in the Republic of Zambia, in, this, in every corner of the Republic of Zambia. I think this, uh, this, these are the, the, the small toothing problems that are there. But all in all, in Katombora constituency, we are doing fine. Though not at 100%, but we may be at 90% or whatever, because of the challenges of the long distances our people have to cover, to access information, and sometimes it's an issue of illiteracy, because uh, most of our people without free education are not able to go to school. It was very, very difficult, because you would think 500 kwacha is small money, or 200 kwacha. It was a lot of money for our people. You know, it was a lot of money. You can't send, you find your five children, just to raise the maybe 1,000 kwacha for a villager. It was quite quite a lot. Hence the reason why you see us in Katombora constituency emphasizing and thanking the new Don government, particularly on the free education, particularly on this money, because this money is touching so many lives, my brother, it's touching so many, many lives in a special way through the constitution. If you went to Momba at the time we were taking over office, if you are talking of the health facilities, mothers are to deliver literally on the ground. There is no, there is no bed, there is giving life on the floor, even the floor is a muddy constructed floor. Just wooden poles around like it's a wild animal delivery. Things were quite bad. No proper road network to Momba. That is the reason why we are saying we need earth moving equipment. We need dams. We need to put up things. Things were bad, my brother. Very, very bad. So I want to indicate that uh, a lot of things are happening in Katombora constituency. And CDF having been increased, a lot of other miracles will occur in terms of bettering the lives of our people. I think this is the way it should be. Okay, great. As we draw close, uh, generally, one of the biggest problems that people feel um, the European need to sort out is the agricultural sector. We're getting into the rain season how are farmers in Katombola preparing themselves ahead of the coming, uh, you know, farming season? Have you already started dispatching the support that you usually give to the farmers in readiness for the farming season? Yes, indeed. Um, agriculture is very, very important. I think in Zambia, uh, the president has been ringing bells of Zambian citizens to get ready to go and invest in the agriculture sector. His indication is that farming is a business. I think when you listen very carefully to the speeches by His Excellency President, very, very carefully, you see an idea being inculcated in the minds of the Zambian people that if we are going to invest so much in agriculture, we can feed the whole of Africa and we can end the dollars. We don't need to go and work for somebody. You can have your own farm. There are agriculture zones that are coming now. Our people in Katombora constituency are very happy with the policies of the new Don government. Our people right now are getting ready. Remember there is FISIP, which has been pronounced over and over. Now it's called CASIP. It's going CASIP. We are graduating it into CASIP. The FISIP is a very, very important project for the farmers to help farmers who are viable but are challenged in one way or the other owing to lack of capacity. We have had a situation where previously people are not graduating. It's just on FISIP and is not graduating. And it went even more criminal that people now started conniving with officers from government 
to form up non-existent cooperative where you find one person is got 50 cooperatives and is getting the fertilizer on trucks and they are selling with the order and tranquility that has now been brought up our people are already getting the fertilizer you know you heard the pronouncement of the evacha system now having to be well done it will now be well done and it's been done correctly this time around our people are already accessing the fertilizer but the indication from the government, those who will not for whatever reason access, because they have graduated or there's a reason, they will now be able to access the credit window. So in Katombola constituency, we are very happy with the bringing of the, of the fertilizer well in time. The fertilizer, the seed, which is already been distributed now, we are very, very happy in Katombola constituency. So those who are under FISIP or CASIP, Mm -hmm. have already started receiving yes they inputs. have they have started receiving they have the fertilizer and seed is being distributed as we are speaking now mm -hmm. and we are happy because it has come well in advance it has come on time just before the rain season unlike in the past where fertilizer could come seed could come in february so how do you plant it how do you plant that seed so that forced the farmers to literally sell and do this and that so otherwise from the perspective of katombora constraints on the FISIP, we are okay. We just think that the credit window must quickly open so that we can all access the money through the credit window so that we can go agriculture. Remember, the country is going green and we can only go green through growing crops and be able to supply the region. There's good market now in the Congo for maize. Somebody was telling me how much dollars, US dollars, you'd sell a bag of maize in the Congo, you'd sell in Angola, you'd sell in the region, you'd sell in Kenya and countries in the East Africa. So I think that um, it's a good thing to do. If you don't have a farm, you should think in farming, my brother. You should think farming. This is the way to go, and we thank the government for that. My final question to you will be, summarize the 2024 national budget in your own um, uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. How do you think the 2024 budget is? I think the, this is a highly progressive budget. Why? Because it is touching on agriculture. It is touching on agriculture, that's reason number one. It has opened a window for expansion of the agriculture sector in Zambia. It is bringing the issue of having to ensure that we water harvest. We cannot think agriculture without water. The idea that government has brought through a policy of government to ensure that water is harvested is the way to go. Water is everything. We can irrigate because the problem we've been having in this country is drought. Like, for example, last year, we did not grow. Our soybeans didn't come out very well because the rain disappeared when we needed it. So the policies that have been pronounced in the agriculture sector, bringing in the issue of extension officers, bringing in the issues of having to ensure that uh, the, the extension officers are taken to the ground where they are to help our farmers, bringing the credit window, bringing in a expansion of resources that has been put to the agriculture sector, ensuring that um, extension officers are actually put on the doorsteps where the farmers are, is a good thing to do. And particularly that we are going to go in the direction of having agriculture zones, we are going to go in the direction of irrigating. I think that is a very serious milestone to our farmers because the problem has been water. People have wanted to go into the agriculture sector, but the gamble has been too serious for you to invest money when you are not sure you are going to harvest because the rain can just disappear through these challenges of climate change. So that is very, very important for us. Two, the other issue that touched me is the issue of cancerous. The decision by this government for the very first time to think that cancerous are strategic partners is very, very important. And we appreciate that decision. More so, the decision to increase CDF. CDF, to me and my people, the people of Katombora constituency, means a lot. The, 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 the CDF is going to change the lives of our people. As people who are complaining about road network will complain no more. The people who are complaining of no dams, they will complain no more. People who are complaining of the challenge of having no uh, no deep tanks who complain no more. The people who are having problems with the schools having been at a distance who complain no more. 
access to clean drinking water through the Kazungura Water Project. As member of parliament, I'm very, very happy with that decision by His Excellency and his government. I'm very happy with another increment of telephone network towers that this government has announced through that budget. I can say a number of things, but simply to say it was a highly progressive budget that changes everything. The announcements, for example, of a waiver on the civil servants who are earning particular amounts on the other categories of our employees through the window that has been created through the tax rebate that has been increased from to about to, to, to about uh, which has been increased to over five five thousand now five thousand one hundred. This gives a relief to the to, to the worker. So a number of progressive pronouncements have been made through this budget which have capacity to grow the economy, particularly in the agriculture sector, because Katombora constituency is predominantly an agriculture zone. And as member of parliament, I'm also a farmer. I produced last year. I keep cattle. I also grow crop. I keep pigs. I keep chickens, layers of chickens. As member of parliament, I am a stakeholder in the agriculture sector. And I'm happy with those pronouncements by His Excellency President. And I want to encourage the people of Katombora constituency, that we must fold our sleeves and go farming. Because farming is a business. There are a lot of opportunities that are there. Let's keep chickens. The layers particularly. In Kazungula, we have a special chicken called the Sasso chicken. Let's go Sasso. Okay, let's go Sasso chickens. Lay eggs, collect eggs, morning, evening, collect the eggs. Let's go to grow maize. Maize is fetching a good price. Let us take advantage of the. We don't have the money. We go and ask for the credit window. They give us a highly discounted loan facility. We go into agriculture. This is very, very progressive. This is very, very. Whether you are going to keep fish, you are going to do what? Everything has been laid bare through the availability of the funds. Let's use the CDF. CDF is increased. You have challenges? Get to the MP. The MP's phone. I would like to hear somebody who say, MP, you don't pick up the phone. I'll be very happy to hear such a person because no one would say the MP for Katombora Constituent doesn't pick his phone. Even if you are calling him in parliament, I will find your missed call, I will call you back. You call me when I'm free, I cut and call you back. Because I know you are in my constituents. You may not have sufficient talk time. These are the issues. And from the perspective of the member of parliament, he will continue from the office of the member of parliament to support render financial assistance to the most indigent members of society that he considers through his small income that he gets here and there to fund those categories. Very soon, we'll be in Kazungula at the market to go and consolidate, reinforce our mothers in Kazungula on the markets to give them small grants, get one salary from the MP, throw, give to these our mothers because we love our mothers, we love also the church. We are growing the Catholic church in Katombora constituency. We are growing other churches. We are so happy. And we want the church also to participate, like His Excellency directed us uh, the day before yesterday to ensure that the church is able to access CDF. I think that they should take an active role in working with this government, working with this government to better the lives of the people, particularly the promotion of unity and peace in the country, which is a vital ingredient that we need. Since 1964, we have had peace. We don't want divisions on tribal lines, don't want divisive elements. This government must not tolerate such things. Our conversation was on the 2024 national budget vis-a-vis uh, -vis the increment of the CDF from 28.3 million kwacha to 30.6 million kwacha, how it has been, how the CDF has helped transform constituencies. And the first constituents of, uh, under our discussion is Katombola. We had uh, Katombola Area Member of Parliament, Honorable Clement and Deleki. And of course, in our subsequent episodes, we'll have other mm -hmm. MPs to come and share with us their personal experiences in terms of how CDF is transforming lives in their constituency. The UPND has branded CDF as a game changer. What is it that CDF is changing? That is what the conversation is all about. And that's what we want MPs to tell us. So in recap, um, 16 words in Katombola. And uh, Honorable Andeleki has indicated that uh, they are building 16 schools, both primary, secondary, 
on top of that health facilities to cater for pregnant mothers who in the past have been struggling when giving birth more than 160,000 people in Katombola, five chief domes in Katombola. And among the projects that they are looking at, obviously, so far they have been, uh, empowered 86 groups who have already uh, acquired loans and, of course, grants as well. 2024, they are looking at um, um, a, a, a acquisition of earth-moving machines, opening up Kazungula, and also tackling one of the critical issues, and that will have to do with the water and the sanitation. Obviously, water is a very, very difficult uh, 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 resource to be acquired in Katombola, so they're looking at putting up water points where people can easily get access to water. Road Network is another project that CDF is uh, working on. Well, Honorable, thank you so much. It's been a great conversation. Thank you, my brother. We thank wish you well. So thank you very much for the opportunity to appear on this Indigenous TV station. Thank you. This is not the first and last that you're going to see Honorable Clement Andaleki. as he will be coming in as we will also be looking at other national matters as well. But for now, we want to thank him so much for taking time from his busy schedule to come and discuss this important issue with us. It's bye-bye and... God.